All right, so they're all mounted. We're gonna go ahead and use this skid and put them on here and take them around and put them on the truck. I think some of you probably thought these were for the dump truck build, and they're not. These are for Justin's ambulance, so we're gonna take that around, get them mounted up real quick, and get that thing off jack stands. Would you look at that? Would you just look at it? So all the new wheels and tires are on. Well, they're his original wheels, just sandblasted and painted. And I just aerosol overhauled the lug nuts just to make them look not rusty. So Justin will have to retorque these again. But it's a nice fit. It looked good. It went on good. All right. Now it's time to start working on the hitch. All right, so the project at hand would be to take these pieces of a puzzle and put it together and make a happy little picture. All right, so this is what we're starting with. A jagged cut, not long enough frame rail. So I had these made, and these bring us all the way out to the end. So what we're going to do is take these out. I'm going to paint the back side white, and then go through the other side where my bolt holes are in the body mount and on the shock mount that rear airbag bolt to the mount and this extra hole here we're going to mark those so that i can drill them and then once they're drilled we will uh fit it in here so i'm holding this back exactly one half an inch so that when we put our quarter inch plate in here we'll still have a quarter inch gap between the body and the plate so it's not going to rub it and I've got it sandwiched in here, a C-clamp, so we can keep it tight. Now I'm going to go through and mark the holes. You can see how my marks are laid out, and then I went and center punched them. There may or may not have been a granddaughter walking on them. But we got it. I got one set up, drilled, and just making sure everything fits. I got my half inch of gap right there. And everything lines up real good. So now I need to figure out how much longer my hardware needs to be than what we have. I only added quarter inch. Um, but there was some rust jacking between these, the frame and the mount. And I need to squeeze that together. So I want to make sure I get something long enough so we can get that. I'll, I'll, I'll use a C-clamp and a block and I'll squeeze that together before we tighten it. But that's one end. All right, so we got our half inch gap here, just like the other side. It fits really nice, both of them do. I'm very happy with that. All my holes worked out real well. Everything's lined up, so I wanted to check that before I go any farther. But now that I know everything's good, and I got my brackets set here, just making sure they're hanging straight and they're you know at 90 degrees to the frame. What I'm gonna do is take these liners back out, and I'll go ahead and clean them, prime them, and paint the back sides because once I put them in there, I won't be able to get to them. Uh, another thing we're gonna do is I'll pull this off. While this is paint is drying, I'll take a paintbrush and some axle grease, and I'll basically paint the inside of this frame. I've cleaned up with a needle scaler pretty good. Now, you could use a rust inverter if you wanted to. Uh, I like to do grease. I think the grease makes it a good layer of protection, and it kind of uh, keeps the water helps to keep the water out and I really like that so that's what I'm gonna do as you can see it's a real nice fit I'm very happy with you know extending the frame like this and bringing it out here I think it's gonna make for a nice hitch so let me get these out get both pieces out and get them cleaned up and painted all right so I got two coats of primer on and just on the, the part that's gonna go inside the frame once that dries I'm gonna hit it with two coats of paint and we're gonna let that dry overnight before I go and put it into the frame um, I'm still going to have to clean some of this off on the end where I'm going to weld to on the outside, that end and, you know, that end over there and this end, but I'd rather clean it off than I would not get enough paint on. So I'm going to go to Tractor Supply. They sell grade 8 bolts by the pound. That's where I usually get them unless I need special bolts. I need one, two, three, four, five half inch bolts per side, so it's 10 total. And I got the length. I've got one in here that I took that's a grade 5. So I'll look at that and see what my length is. You can maybe see it right there, right there. So I'll take that with me so I can get the right length. On my last coat of paint now, just waiting for it to dry. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and move it inside and let it dry for the night and then pick this up tomorrow after it's a little better cured. 
and then I can get to work on it. Been a couple days now. Paint's good and dry. So I think now the next step's going to be to get in there and paint that with some axle grease. Clean this up real good with a flap disc so when I weld to it, hopefully I can get a, a real nice weld on here. Wire wheel cleans it and polishes it, but it really doesn't get down below the mill scale. So I got the first one in, and it's all snugged up in and bolted in place. The only thing it's not in is one hole for the shock mount. And this side is ready to go in. I got the grease all slathered in there. The nice thing about the grease is as it gets hot, it's going to melt. Well, not really melt, but you know, it'll become a little more pliable and it'll get down in the cracks and crevices pretty good. All right, so the back plate is now welded to these frames. So I have it set where it's right at the bottom of the body. So then I don't have this piece of material yet because I hadn't decided exactly what I wanted. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to cut the hole for the receiver tube here and then get it laying, bring it all the way back and get the support that goes from left to right here. I'll turn around and see if that makes any more sense. There we go. Yeah, so we want to cut the hole in here in the center and get the tube tacked in here and then get our cross, cross member over here in the very front two brackets. One goes from that side to that side. We'll get that set and we'll get this thing uh, level with the the bottom of or the top of the frame. So I would be okay with just a slight pitch. Okay, so it just slightly tips it up and I'll make sure the back end is open so any water gets in can can uh, you know roll out of it. And out here I've got this set right at the bottom of the body so that this is going to kind of carry the load but we have another piece going under here i just haven't got it yet i keep looking for salvage steel because this one piece is is very expensive and i haven't bought it yet so i keep hoping i'm going to find something salvage that will be cheaper than buying brand new so let's uh let's lay this out next all right so i've got the hole cut for the receiver tube here and I've laid this plate here and tack welded it so that this would lay right where I want it and we get a nice tight fit here. So I've got it out just enough that you can get a pin in but not out so far that you're constantly hitting your knees on this compared to the rest of the body. And then what I've done is come in here and uh, hard for you to see but we got this sloped at a degree, degree, degree and a half uh, down slightly so that we kind of have a slight pitch up, and we're only talking a degree. Um, just enough to when you put the load on, it should, you know, if it has anything, it's going to come down just slightly. And then I brought it back to a piece of four inch channel. The four inch channel ties into them, I believe them are three eighths plates that I've got coming off the frame up here and bolted in with a shock mount and a half inch over here. So they're coming down here. I'm just tack welded right now while I'm fitting. I got that centered. And the same thing over here, just tack welded. Now the next thing I need to do is come in this area, right here, this is the original body mount. And I cut this out, so we're gonna run a piece of C-channel from this side over to this one over here. So that's gonna hold those from, from pushing in because the body is resting on it so it's naturally going to want to push this in this word this way so we're going to put a brace in here that's going to sub, uh, it's going to push make each one push against each other and hold it up at the same time it's going to support this all right so we got this welded in all the way around and then it comes back here to this cross member and then it goes to that body mount and this body mount then back to the four inch and to each one of the brackets I made back there so that'll hold it that's gonna hold it this way and some load this way so now what I need is the piece that goes underneath this body will go from the outside edge underneath all this underneath here out to the edge can't really do anything else till I get that 
All right, it's a new day, <clears throat> and I gotta tell you, I've been thinking about this. I just can't live with it. I say this all the time. I'm not a welder. I say it I don't know how many times, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. I was struggling. Like, I got this one going pretty good, and I started coming across here, and my, my motion was just a little too fast here, and then I started slowing down, starting to get it the way I wanted it. And then I come around the side and I melted the tip of the welder because I was too hot and wire wasn't coming out fast enough. And then I got it cleaned up and started here. But look, I mean, look at this. And I just can't live with it. So <clears throat> I think I can do better. So I'm going to try to do better. So what I'm going to do is very delicately, I'm going to grind all this back out and try not to make a big mess of this plate up here it's gonna look awful so at this point it's like it's a catch-22 right i could grind this out and the weld look better but then the metal look bad because of my grind marks so it's it's tough it's it's a tough call but i'm gonna gamble on the fact that i think i can get this to look better so that's what i'm gonna do okay so i ground it all out and i'll take a flat disc and smooth this all out and I've tried to get this as clean as I can without any real gouge marks because they'll show up for sure in the paint. But I've got it the best I can do, so now we're gonna give it another shot and try and run this bead again. I'm running my fingernail over it to make sure there's no high spots. Because anywhere there's a high spot, it will show up in my weld. And there's one right there. Okay, I went ahead and ran another bead and uh, I'm happy with that. I think it's better, It's it's probably not not as good as I could possibly do, but um, yeah, I'm gonna stop while I'm ahead. Um, I think it'll be okay. So now I've got a few braces I wanna take care of in, underneath and finish up some final welding, and I gotta get this uh, box tubing for down here. All right, so I've got everything welded in here, and I welded this to this C-channel. I turned this C-channel back this way on purpose so all the crud doesn't accumulate in here. Uh, you know get packed up from all the road salt and crud so I just welded it, the tube into here and then I made this plate that slid I slid it right here so it went half and half and then just welded around it and then to the C channel to make that stronger and we're welded here and here and here and then on both sides of the C channel and both sides of the plate here all right so these two brackets are what's going to come off the frame and come down the back of here so the two inserts i put in that come in like this you can almost see the heats the heat mark right here it's that's going to come right down here to the bottom to where that box tubing is all right so there's the brackets in place and i'll show you what what my plan is here it's to come off of the liner the steel frame liner that we added we're gonna weld it up into here, and then we'll weld it all the way down here on this side, and then on the back side. And then what'll happen, we'll do the same thing on that one, and that three and a half by three and a half box tubing is gonna sit right here, and then it will come out this way and support this part of the body. You can see this is pretty flexible, so we gotta stop that from moving around. Alright, so that was in real time. This is 5 16 box tube, three and a half by three and a half. I'm telling you, that Evolution saw that Diablo blade is hard to beat. This is the end of the tube, and we're going to cap this off. So I took some quarter plate and cut it about the right size, and then tried to get the same radius. And now we're going to weld that in place, see how 
See if we can get this to turn out worth anything or not. The other side turned out okay, but uh, I hate to say that because then this one will turn out like crap. So, but I got to thinking that it might look better if I took the flap disc to it and rounded it all off so it looked like it more more like a bumper. I don't know if it matters or not, but anyways, now I'm going to wipe it down, and the part that is going to be going under here, I need to prime the paint, which is this part. So I've got this pretty much flap disc ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and prime and paint this so that once I put it up underneath there, it'll be the last time, and uh, we can start with the brackets. I've got this cut too. Uh, slot cut here and here for my brackets that come down through there they're going to get welded in all right i got the bumper in and i've welded down through here on both sides and then all the way down both sides. I'll tell you, I really struggle with this. Um, trying to get a continuous looking weld all the way across there. I don't need that weld. That's just to keep the you know, metal and rust from like constantly oozing out here and making it look bad. That's the only reason I weld that solid. I thought it would be better than you know, rust getting in between the two and leaving stains and that kind of crap. So that's what I did there. And I got the bottom brackets. All welded in of course it's dark under here hard to see but yeah you get the idea you know we're all welded in here all the way up so now the next thing I need to do is uh, wipe it all down and get ready to get some primer on it but it needs to cool a little bit first gotta drill a hole for the seven pin we're not putting it in we're just drilling a hole for it so I'm using a two inch annular cutter Problem is it vibrates. It vibrates so much it shuts it off. Got the hole drilled. Now I want to get my hole center punch. So I use these transfer punches so I can just fit it right up in there and get it exact. Man, I was buzzing right along. I wiped everything down with acetone, getting ready to prime this, started priming it back and forth, and Lo and behold, I run out of primer. I thought I had enough. <sighs> so I figured, well, I'll go ahead and drill that hole. Maybe I'll think of where I have the last can of primer at. But apparently I don't have any. So I have to go get some now. All right, I went and got more primer. And got two coats of primer on everything. Let it dry. And then I started on my paint on my second coat of paint. And it's turning out okay. Now, of course, you can see everywhere I welded to that quarter inch plate, you know, but that's okay. I mean, it is what it is. It's a hitch. It is not a fender or a hood. So it's meant to take abuse. That's what we're doing. So now I need to wait for the bottom to dry because it's not drying nearly as fast as this outside did. And uh, I went ahead and painted the inside edge here all the way around because it was red. That way it's not red and then, you know, black and then green. And Justin can repaint. Look at a bug got in my paint. Look at that. Look at that. A bug in my paint. Yeah, well, I guess we'll leave him there. But as soon as it dries, I'll get up underneath there. I'm trying to get really good coverage under there. So I put his tread plate back on, and I used these self-tapping screws in the original holes where the rivets were, because uh, he's talking about painting this thing. So there's no sense in riveting this on, riveting this on, and he'll have to drill the rivets back out. All the paint's done, it's dried. I got a couple flaws. There's a pretty good run right here. There's some sags over here. I got a bug in it right there. Whatever. You know, it, it's it's far better than it was, and I don't think he's looking for show quality here, so uh, we should be all right. It's funny that when I ordered these uh, D-rings, I thought, yeah, that based on the rating, that, that's more than he'll need. It's overkill. And then I put it on this hitch, and I'm just like, boy, those look kind of small. Uh, eh. they'll be all right so 
I put a lot of paint on this, a lot of primer and a lot of paint, and you know, I'm trying to get good coverage everywhere so that uh, you know it, it stays looking as good as it can for as long as it can. And uh, I didn't realize how much overspray was uh, on me until I went in last night. My wife's like, "Oh boy," so my jeans are pretty much, yeah, they're ready to go in the trash. They're just black. Um, shocks are all back in backup alarms back in place so I think we're just about done with the hitch here um, the only thing left to do is the transmission service so and it's just a matter of taking some bolts out and the filter comes down out of the bottom I don't think I'll video that but you know just change the filters and put fluid back in but once I got it done we'll get it outside and do a walk around of the whole thing Justin will take care of the seven pin he'll put it and wire it up the way he wants to um and he'll put a trailer brake controller in it he's also going to run air off the off the ambulance back here somehow some way probably on a glad hand maybe so that he can uh he can have air going to his trailer for airing up tires and stuff and whatever else you he'd want air for but uh yeah let me get this get this transmission service real quick and get it out taking her run her down the road make sure that she does everything she's supposed to do since we uh, you know we've done a little bit of work to her we want to make sure all the gauges are where they need to be and you know it runs and drives like it should uh, the war the engine warning lights on I checked the code for Justin I told him it's a, a high pressure oil uh, code and he seems to think it might just be an IPR so uh, he doesn't want me to do anything with that he's gonna look into it maybe a high pressure oil pump could be a lowering on an injector or it could be the IPR like I said could be a lot of different things you know so he's gonna look into that but I'm happy with it it steers it runs drives and steers and brakes like it should well there she is all finished up got everything done that we talked about and she is ready to go I think it turned out okay um, hindsight's 2020 a couple things I probably would have done slightly different on the hitch but overall I'm pretty happy with it all the tires are on everything you saw ready to go so i hope you guys enjoyed this series on this project helping justin out and uh that's the end of that and next we are going to be moving back on to the c4500 build right there it's coming in next we're gonna get that dump truck finished up and after that will be square body so look for that stuff there may be a slight twist to the square body project i'm not certain yet but um we'll have to wait and see but i hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching along and catch you on the next one